Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear students this is a video for the subject of education for the course of bachelors in education and for the paper of educational technology part 2 this video lecture is based on the approaches of educational technology and in this lecture we will be talking about the steps involved in the systems approach this video lecture is recorded by dr iram khan the course coordinator and the presenter of this video is dr iram khan from jamia millia islamia new delhi the academic expert or the reviewer of this video is dr savita kaushal from jamia millia islamia new delhi this video is produced under the project dth swayam prabha channels of ministry of education government of india hello dear students i am dr iram khan assistant professor at institute of advanced studies in education faculty of education jamia millia islamia new delhi today i am going to talk about the approaches of educational technology and in this lecture we will be discussing the steps involved in the systems approach let us first see that what are the objectives the objectives of this session are to discuss the systems approach and to delineate the major steps involved in the systems approach we all know that the systems approach is a technique which is based on the concept and the basic parameters where it talks about the system it talks about the organization and the management of a system it also talks about the understanding the prediction and the controlling of the operation of a system in a given environment and what exactly it the, this entire system is trying to do it is trying to achieve the predetermined objectives in an intelligent efficient and economic way and in this particular approach which we know as uh, uh, with the name of systems approach a problem is taken into account in its totality and the attempts are made to solve this problem in the context of two important things the first is the predetermined objectives and the second point is the functioning of its interrelated parts and the whole system under the given environmental constraint so these are the two uh, important contexts under which we see that how the problem is solved here in a very systematic way when we are following this approach which is called as the systems approach so in its basic functioning the system approach tries to have a reasonable control over the inputs the process the outputs and also the environmental constraints a system is basically maintained if it meets the requirements of the objectives objectives of the system and if it does not uh, actually maintains the needs and the requirements of the system then we need to modify the system we can say that because the objectives are not met that is why there is a need to modify the system and make it in a way uh, to function so that the set objectives can be met and in consequence we can see that there arises a need for adjustment either in the contents of uh, whatever is uh, being input or even we can go for seeing that what exactly is to be changed in the process so either there is an adjustment made in the content or in the process or at times we have to go for the adjustment in the both things the input as well as the process and also there may be a need for the change and the development in the existing norms under which the whole system operates and in this way various modes of adjustment which are involved uh, or you can say that uh, these uh, adjustments which are involving the uh, parameters 
or the components and also the functioning of the system they all are tried and the most feasible one is retained and for what purpose this most important or most properly functioning system is retained it is retained for getting the best result or the best output so this is somehow the basics of understanding the systems approach or what exactly uh, the process of working of the systems approach is all about let us see that what are the steps which are involved in the systems approach so if we talk about the steps there are three major steps which are involved in the systems approach the first step is the system analysis the second step is the system design and development and the third step is the systems operation and evaluation and all these three steps are very very important they go one by one and they are very important in terms of uh, uh, following the systems approach so let us see that what exactly these three steps mean we will get uh, into the details of these three steps so the first step which is known as the system analysis basically what it means system analysis is concerned with the task of analyzing a system in the form of identifying whatever are the elements of this system so what we do in the system analysis we actually do the task of analyzing this system in the form of identifying its elements and how these elements are organized so we will be or, uh, analyzing their organization and how they are functioning so the next thing which we will analyze after the organization we will see that how their function or the performance individually individually of all the parts and also as a whole in order to see that or uh, in order to determine the need to make the adjustment to ensure the achievement of the system so we will be analyzing all these things all these uh, uh, basic tasks and these tasks in the uh, nomenclature of uh, systems approach we call them as the parameters and we all know that these parameters are known as the input the process the output and the environmental constraints so this helps the designer of the system to identify the constraints that interfere in the attainment of the objectives of the system the the stipulated objectives of the system and through this analysis or the system analysis the appropriateness of the system objectives in the view of the structure and functioning of the system may also be properly evaluated so this gives an idea that this first step of system analysis is very very important because after the system analysis we can uh, get to know that what are the ailments or what are the features which are either to be retained or to be adjusted so that the system works in a very proper way and uh, we can be in a position to get the best output which is possible the stipulated objectives are properly attained so the system analysis which is the first step is something which we have to do in a very proper way the next step is the systems design and development what exactly it means so the system analysis which we have just seen basically is concerned with the analysis of the entire system this particular point of systems design and the development this is related with the task of synthesizing adding so we are making a synthesis here so what happens that here there are attempts which are made to design and to develop the system on the basis of finding 
which we have received or which we have got from from where from the system analysis so whatever we have received from the system analysis in the uh, in the form of the uh, readings or records that particular information is now implemented to improve the design and also to develop the system so there are few uh, activities which are actually done here in this step when we we are talking about the systems design and the development which is the second step let us see that what are those uh, important uh, activities which we have to do here in this step the first thing is to determine or to check the objectives of a system then the next point is to select or making a selection of appropriate devices methods or the strategies and also the approaches and then the third point is formulating a scheme of comprehensive programs for the working of the system in relation to its parameters and the stipulated objectives and by parameters we mean the input the process the output and also the environmental constraints and the stipulated objectives are those object objectives which are the basis of designing a system which is uh, in front of us and which is in function so these two are basically work in the system in close consonance so here in the systems design and development we actually work on the devices the methods the strategies and to formulate the entire changes or if there are some alterations required or some adjustments required whatever we have analyzed in the first step we try to implement all those in this in the design of the system in this stage and we try to develop the system in a way that it works in the best possible uh, speed or best possible way so this is the second step which is the systems design and the development then the next is systems operation and evaluation what is done here see the systems operation and the evaluation it is concerned with the actual operation of a system and also its evaluation and why this evaluation is done it this evaluation is done in terms of the uh, checking off that whether the stipulated objectives which are actually set in the beginning and what purpose was there the purpose was for providing necessary feedback to bring desirable improvement and modification in the structure and functioning of the system so we do the evaluation so that we can see that whether the stipulated objectives which are set at the beginning they all are covered or not they all are attained or not but once the system is operational and if there are any sort of uh, uh, issues then immediately the feedback after the evaluation the feedback is actually given and desirable improvement or the modification in the structure and also in few of the cases the function in the functioning of the system is made and if the output of a system meet the expectations or requirements of the stipulated objectives or the uh, the norms the system can be allowed to carry on it it gives an uh, uh, a kind of impression that the system is smoothly working there is no any problem because we are getting the objectives we are attaining the stipulated objectives and we are getting the exact output which was desired so it means that the system is working very properly so we can let the system carry on in the same way so this need for bringing necessary alteration or improvement in the system is if it is felt uh, what will be the case when we can see, we can actually find 
uh, this necessity uh, coming across. So there, if there is a discrepancy between any of the two things, like any of the two parameters, we all know the parameters which are input, output, input process, then output and also the environmental constraints. So if there is a discrepancy found between any of the two, we can say or we can make out that now there is some sort of improvement which is required in the system. So what are those uh, uh, ways in which we can make the alterations happen or we can modify the system? Those ways can be, the first way can be by the manipulation in the elements or inputs of the system. Then the next can be by pulling the functions of elements or inputs. What does it mean? Pulling the functions of elements or input. We are actually making the, the uh, some sort of force or some sort of uh, pressure on that element which is uh, which is responsible for the input. So there is a possibility that the function or uh, functioning of that particular part through which the input is made, there is some ailment or some problem in that, that particular part. So we can make changes. We can actually see that what exactly uh, that input uh, providing device or section is uh, having uh, or what sort of problem is having. And then we can actually pull it out and we can make a change in that device or uh, that, that part of the system which is used for providing the input. And after doing this, few of the times we have seen that the problem is resolved. Then next, what can be done? By making the control or controlling the process and interaction among the elements of the system. At times it happens that once the system is working, the elements of the system are not working very properly. The interaction between the parts of the system is not very swift or very uh, fluid. So we have to see that what are those uh, uh, points, what are those uh, things which are, which are checked once the system is functioning. And we need to control. We, we should be keeping an eye and we should be controlling the process and also the interaction among the elements of the system. Then what next can be done? by making some sort of manipulations in the environmental constraints of the system, it is seen at many other cases that we can, see, we can actually receive better results, better outputs. So this manipulation in the environmental constraints can also be uh, one of the ways in which we can, uh, we can actually get rid of all those discrepancies which are found in the functioning of a system. So this was the third step, which is the systems operation and evaluation, uh, which actually is uh, responsible for the functioning of this entire system, which is in practice. So in this way, the system can be restructured, reorganized, and its functioning can also be replanned. And when everything is uh, redone, then automatically the re-operated uh, system will be providing some sort of better results. So we can achieve better results from this re-operated or uh, re-planned system, which is having all those components which are uh, included on the basis of whatever analysis was done. The analysis was done to see that where the problem is there and then on the basis of that particular result of the analysis we made the modifications or alterations in the system and then we can find that now the system is providing the better results. So these processes are continued and uh, this is continued till the aim of getting the best result in terms of the stipulated objective. 
with greater economy because when we are running the system we also have to see that how the system works in a very economical way very precise way in an accurate manner so all these processes are continued the processes of modification or alteration in the systems are continued till the aim of getting best results in terms of the stipulated objectives with great economy precision and accuracy is not achieved so in this way the system in the systems approach work and provides the best possible output so let us try to recapitulate what we have studied today in this session we have seen that a system if it meets the requirements of its uh, stipulated objectives the the entire uh, machinery or the entire system is maintained as it is because it is meeting the requirements but in case the requirements are not met requirements in terms of the stipulated objectives if they are not met then the system is supposed to be modified or altered and why this is to be done because we want the best possible output in terms of the stipulated objectives then we have seen that there are three major steps which has which are involved in the systems approach what are those steps the first step is the system analysis what is done here in this particular step the task of analyzing a system in terms of the identification organization and performance of its elements is done and we get to know that which part individually and as a whole is working in which way is it working properly or not if it is not working properly then in the next step the alterations can be done so analysis step is very very important because we want to know that how the functionality of the system is actually uh, done then the next step or the second step is systems design and development in this step the designing and the development of the system on the basis of the first step or the systems analysis the results which we have received in the system analysis is basically executed so we make an alteration if there is a requirement of a change if there is some ailment in the system so we make uh, alterations or modifications in the design and we develop the system in a way uh, so that it is uh, able to give the best possible output according to uh, the achieving uh, achievement of the stipulated objectives the third and the final step is related to systems operation and evaluation what exactly it does this is the final step so here the actual operation of the system and its evaluation for providing the necessary feedback is done so here the this is the operational step so we need to see uh, we actually need to check that what exactly is the uh, is the efficiency of the system and on the basis of whatever we get as a result in this evaluation which is finally done we provide the necessary feedback to the developer so that in if uh, the system requires some sort of uh, changes in future the, the developer would be aware of that what are those changes which are to be done so that we can run a very effective and precise system so this was all about the different steps of uh, the systems approach we will meet with each other in another session another time and we will deal with another aspect of systems approach in another session for today this is all these are those references and the suggested readings which you can also follow for uh, studying more related to this topic and uh, Uh, you can make yourself more updated in terms of the systems approach by reading these texts so this is all for today thank you so much 
we will see each other in another session another time goodbye dear students you are watching a video on approaches of educational technology and this lecture talked about the different steps involved in the systems approach this video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the homebound situation of covid-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources technical errors if any are unintentional and may please be ignored for any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast kindly send your email to techsupport@dth.ac.in thank you so much